Well, hello again, everyone. Uh, it sounds like our audio is good to go, and we are ready to begin. Welcome to today's webinar presented by DocSolid, Design a Digital Mailroom with AirMail 2 for Daily Document Requests. Um, as I mentioned just a few moments ago, we do have a poll taking place on the side of your screen. I see many of you have been answering it, so thank you for that. Uh, for those of you just joining us, if you could continue to answer that poll question before we start today's presentation, that would be great. My name is Carolyn Shomley. I am the host uh, for today's webinar. Uh, just a few housekeeping uh, notes to pass along to you today. Please take a moment to open the chat module by clicking on the chat bubble icon at the bottom of your screen. This will then open a chat area in the lower right corner of your screen. There you will see a drop down menu with options next to the words two. If you have any technical problems today, please send a chat to me, I'm the host. If you have questions or comments for our presenter, you can chat to all panelists and we hope to be able to address those later today at the end of our presentation. A recording of this webcast will be available tomorrow and we will send all registrants an email tomorrow with that link. The sponsors for today's webcast is DocSolid, where law firms do more with less paper. Today's presenter is the president of DocSolid, Steve Irons. Steve started and ran Image Choice, now NChoice, an IBM systems integrator. He then founded and served as CEO at ImageTag, where Steve led a team to develop the original QuickTag imaging software. A holder of 12 US patents, Steve has generated corporate investment ventures with HP, 3M, and Iron Mountain. He is a magna cum laude graduate of North Northern Arizona University. Joining Steve today is Michael Herzog, director of DocSolid. Um, Michael, how are you doing? I see our poll is up and running. Lots of people are taking it. Um, I'll kind of just uh, pass it over to you to kind of give an overview of that poll. Well, thank you, Carolyn, and welcome, everyone. Uh, first of all, I just want to on behalf of our entire team at DocSolid, thank you for joining us today. We know everyone has been dealing with challenges at work and at home. This is precisely why we think you'll find our, t our session today of keen interest. And it's good that you've tuned in because we're gonna have some practical takeaways and information we think you'll be uh, eager to share with your colleagues. So uh, as Carolyn noted, we do have a poll and it's a poll we've been doing for uh, several webinars since uh, the beginning of the pandemic earlier in 2020. And uh, looking at that data has become kind of interesting just to see how the answers have actually changed over time as well as just how people are feeling. So if you haven't already participated, please uh, direct your attention over to that poll. Uh, and I'll just read those questions while you're taking a look at it. When do you think at least 50% of your employees will be returning to work in the office? So uh, at least half of your office employees getting back to work in the office. Your options are, hey, half of our employees are already back or soon, in other words, in the next three months from now, third quarter, or fourth quarter, October to December of this year, and the fourth answer would be next year, so not until 2021. And the final answer there on the list of options would be, we don't plan on going back, we're gonna stay distributed. Um, we'll give you just a moment to fill in your choice and we will continue momentarily. All right, I think we've got enough answers here. Uh, Carolyn, can you share with us those results and I'll read those back so we can take a look at that data. Sure, I'm, I'm uh, closing the poll results right now. It's taken about 10 seconds just to calculate all the data um, and it'll come across real time here in just a moment, another five seconds or so. And I'll get those across to you before we begin. All right, so uh, are you viewing, able to view the results on your end, Michael? Yes, so uh, our, uh, just reading top to bottom then, we are, our first answer was we are already back. We had 18% say we are already back. We had 50% respond soon, which is between now and September of this year. So 18% were already back, 50% say soon, 23% say October to December, and just 2% responded next year, and 2% responded never. They 
will stay distributed from now on, perhaps. So uh, taking a look at those uh, poll answers then, I think uh, what we'll do now shortly is we'll share with you some of the other poll results that we've gotten just to compare how that looks. Um, Steve, I think we're ready to begin whenever you are. Okay, Michael. Uh, let me just grab control here. I pass it right down to you now, Steve. Okay. Excellent. Right. You should be seeing right. my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us today. I'm Steve Irons, president of DocSolid, and you've already met Michael. So let's uh, take a look uh, at the, your poll answers today quickly here. 50% um, of you think that you're going to be back in this next quarter, and another 23% think you'll be back, that's actually in the fourth quarter, October to December timeline. That 2% never slices there, and 18% say you're already back, and 2% next year. Very interesting, this is our poll from today. As Michael said, we're, as everybody else, you know, conducting webinars now. Uh, just about a week and a half ago, here's what a, another large uh, audience at a webinar told us. In that particular webinar, these two combined, 75% said third or fourth quarter this year they'd be back to work. And a, a short you know, week before that, fairly similar, uh, a little bit lower number, 55%. Back at that webinar, again, that was only two weeks ago, 39% were saying they weren't going to be back until next year. So we continue to aggregate this information because it's fluid. Right? I mean, what do those polls tell us? They tell us we are still in a fluid time. And before we talk about designing your digital mailroom today, let me say something about your progress as we push through the pandemic. There are three seasons in this pandemic, and recognizing them helps chart your progression. Uncertainty is the first season. You know, we sent all our employees home, and then we went to work on that as a project, you know, in that order. We didn't know how it would work out. We didn't know how the pandemic was going to advance, but we knew we had to get out of Dodge and equip everybody with work from home capabilities and survive. The big picture was uncertain, and it's only settling down now. Settling is the second season, and we're moving into it. In settling, we're able to make moves for organizational productivity beyond what we had as a, an initial focus on personal work from home productivity. We're tightening down security, uh, collaboration, client interaction. Dare we say we got this when it comes to working from home. And we also start to acknowledge what we ain't got, like face-to-face -face client meetings or um, a nearby staff to support an attorney for their ad hoc needs, and some fundamentals, like access to the Daily Mail. Now, we can't stay here in the settling season, figuring it out. All sites really are looking ahead to the new normal. The new normal is the third and final season, and we wish we could achieve it right now but the pandemic won't cooperate and the economy won't cooperate. Both of them are running a course we can't fully know. Yet we gotta get there in spite of that because new normal is showtime. So as we discover, shape, and hunker down into our new normal, we're gonna need some new work methodologies and systems to support them. And very importantly, now, we can't afford to wait for new normal. We have to start shaping it. And we can start now with a foundational approach. A foundational approach for new normal is this. In new normal, we need to be fully operational with our workforce in home offices or in the downtown office. Both. Always. 
ready, both. And that's for certain. And we need the policies and methods and systems in place to support this. We can go to work on that right now. We can grab our new normal. In the new normal, you need a digital mailroom. For attorneys and staff to be productive in home offices, they need access to daily inbound mail and paper documents in file rooms back at the office. And for anybody who comes back to the main office, they too should benefit from this digital mailroom. DocSava developed AirMail 2 specifically to solve this problem as a new digital mailroom operation for a law firm. So our AirMail 2 solution is built on DocSolid's proven paper to digital platform for law firms and also the new normal requirements for working in and outside of the office. Well, here was our problem. And today it's our problem to support remote workers, but we're going to quickly find it's also the same need for people when they come back to the office. But but our we, we had a mass exodus of workers to the home office and daily mail continued to show up back at the main office. So this is the US postal mail, but it's also process server deliveries of documents, FedEx and UPS's envelopes. Also these attorneys, once they got settled in out at their homes, they had requests for documents that were back in the file room, the red weld or a, a folder or a document out of the file room. So those file room retrievals needed to be serviced. And of course, with everybody outbound, these need to be delivered digitally, which means you got to scan at OCR, create searchable PDFs and put it somewhere. Dasada believes you should deliver using your document management system because it's the final resting place for these documents. This digital delivery manifested quickly and severely. So how did we address it as law firms? Well, we were making do, you know, we, we had to get people out there and every law firm said, well, we can stand, we'll figure it out. But we've got everybody sitting out in home offices. So there's an increased volume for this need. It has to be serviced productively. And this is going to last. It already has. So the methods we use have to be secure. And lastly, this is how we operate. This is a, a, a new normal operation. So we, we need, we've got a mission critical service to provide. It's gotta be reliable. This is an essential new operation for a law firm born out of these times. And when we cobbled together the way we we're gonna address it at first, uh, some problems emerged. We said, well, let's just scan, maybe we'll scan the email. But ad hoc scanning, you know, revealed inefficiencies and pretty quickly the skeleton staff that was able to get back into the office was overwhelmed. There weren't really any procedures and there was no oversight of this. A lot of law firms and, and perhaps you among them started sending couriers to drive paper mail or documents out to attorneys' homes. And some law firms actually had a curbside pickup where attorneys would drive back into the main office and, you know, it'd be like a McDonald's. Somebody would meet them at the sidewalk with their uh, daily mail. So uh, a lot of challenges emerged that revealed that this needed to be um, dealt with with structure. And that structure uh, manifested a number of requirements for a digital mailroom in a law firm. First, it's got to be easy to deploy. Um, this time, and the next time, we don't get a lot of notice when we have to send everybody home. So DocSolid built the digital mailroom as a hosted operation. Uh, so it's zero footprint back at the firm. This needs to run like an operation. So the operators, the scant few people who can go back in need to be productive. They have to be given simple procedures and yet they have to operate securely. We have multiple offices to cover. So you have to think about staffing variability in different offices where physical mail is received. And you have to think about how do they get trained to do this? We, we've got to make this um, as simple as possible. As I mentioned before, um, Doc Sada believes these 
documents, once they're digitized, should be delivered using the document management system mechanism. It's already secure, and it's going to be the final resting place for these documents. And all law firms for years have been trying to get out of the business of scanning to email with attachments. So we're focused on delivering to the document management system. When this happens, we want to use the in-place scan devices. We don't want to have to deal for weeks with a, a digital copier vendor who has to come in and put a panel on and add new software. The stuff that's there, your digital copiers, needs to be able to be used as is. And then lastly, these sometimes are uh, business critical. These are uh, uh, calendaring or docketing documents in some cases. So we're going to scan them, we're going to put them where they need to be, um, where they belong, but we've got to have some built-in quality controls. We've got to stage this paper for eventual shredding or permanent retention, but we have to think about the paper after it happens. So these are requirements, these and many more actually for a digital mailroom that manifest when we want to turn our makeshift, how do we get through this, into a real operation. Well, fortunately at DocSolid, we already had a paper to digital platform for law firms and our method of getting things scanned uses barcoded stamps, posted stamps they look like, and our postmark platform already gave us what we needed, including our integrations with, uh, you know, document management systems out there. So it makes it very easy to run this operation because our methodology of just putting stamps onto documents and then scanning them to the right place in the document management system uh, makes that a simple process. So typically we want to build a very simple workflow that batches up the work that needs to happen on any given day. Step one in that workflow is that the operators in the mailroom would open and prep the daily mail. By prepping, we mean getting it out of the envelopes and flattening it out, frankly, getting it ready to be scanned. As a separate batch, they would also pull any files or subfolders or documents that had been requested, and they would get them ready to go as well. So we are batching these into stacks. The next step, which I'll show you in a minute, is to use the Airmail 2 software, browser-based application, and for each mail item to pick the deliver to name, who gets this, and then put a stamp on it. Pretty simple, which you'll see how that works. And I do that for all of my mail and get it in a stack. Then I'm gonna be able to take that stack of barcoded mail and put it in one scan job over at my local digital copier. So I might be operating out of a mail room or a file room, but whatever machines you already have in place, we're gonna turn them into one button stack scanning machines. When they scan these barcoded paper documents, they're gonna know how to go to the right place for the user. The, each user would have a, a daily mail folder in their document management system. And it would also send a, an arrival notification email to that user, your mail's there. And then lastly, when the job is done each day, we're gonna take that paper and stage it. In other words, we want to temporarily house it for a QC or a quality control check. Did everything that entered the process get scanned and did it happen the way we wanted it? And then what do we, what do, we do for disposition? Are we going to maintain these documents for a while? Are we going to shred them? So all that is built in, steps and batched. And again, the reason you batch this is batching it is um, efficient. It's the way to be the most efficient. Perhaps we're gonna make a commitment to get the mail out by noon every single day. So efficiency is very important. If you only have one worker, but if you have two or multiple workers, you can also break this work up so that it can be proceeding simultaneously for efficiency again. So batching is the way to do it. So once I've taken the batch of daily mail, I can turn to the AirMail 2 software. And I'll show you that now. Uh, the first thing you'll see is it's a browser-based software application. So that means it's zero footprint. It doesn't have to be installed. And that's gonna be very important, not just for getting a mailroom stood up and running, but for supporting multiple offices. 
So it's a browser-based software application. And this paper document here might represent, represent the first piece of daily mail that I need to get out. I've pulled that off the top of my stack. Uh, on the AirMail2 screen, the only required entry for that operator is that they identify who is the recipient for this piece of mail. And they can just start to type in this box and the uh, software will automatically filter based upon what they enter. And then they can either click or finish typing that this piece of mail goes to David Robinson. That's actually the only thing they need to enter to get this done. And very importantly, even though AirMail 2 is gonna write things into the document management system, the operators here who have a very simple job, they don't have a login to the document management system. They're just operating with our software, which talks to the DM out of standard APIs, secure APIs out of the back end of our software. So really all the thing I had to do was enter that this was David Robinson, and our software screen is gonna show that operator that we know the next stamp number in their role. These are sequentially numbered. So our software will just always know that stamp number, the barcode number. And for the operator, all they have to do is take their stamp now and put it on the first page of that piece of daily mail. If it's multiple pages, just find an open spot on the first page and now you've done it. You've addressed that mail. You would then take that paper document, which is going to be self-managing through a scan process, and you would put it in what we call a doc folder, which is a folding out basket, and you would just stack up, because we're batching, all of the daily mail as you get it addressed and stamped. So very simple user interface. We're connecting to the uh, firm's active directory and uh, securely abstracting that and all the operator needs to do is say, who gets this? Now, let me just show you a few other things about the AirMail2 software. The, again, the only required entry for a piece of mail or a document that somebody has requested from the file room is to say, who gets this? And that's a facilitated entry. You can see there's, you can also say, this is out of our Des Moines office, if you wanted to filter it down even further. So there's an office's entry. If the operator knows about this particular document, they could add a description. This is optional. But if they do add it, we're going to attach that to the document as it goes into the document management system. There's a page count option. So if I've got a critical document and it happens to be 36 pages, I can tell AirMail2 this is 36 pages. Later on, if it gets scanned and the scanner skips a page, our software is going to catch that automatically. But this is an option. There's a mode setting. So remember, if I'm in a batch for my daily mail, I'll click the daily mail button and I'll get all that done. And then I'll go to my document requests and I'll click that button. What that allows us to do is to put it in separate folders in the document management system for each user. So as a user, as an attorney, I would have a daily mail folder and I would have a document request folder. And there's also an option we found pretty quickly. Now we've been at this 90 days and we've already got our first um, users up and running. But we found that some of these mail rooms actually have a skilled staff that can profile these paper documents all the way into the client and the matter and the folder, document class, everything. So we can add the ability for the mail room operator to profile all the way, all the way to the final resting place in the document management. And we can add the ability to scan uh, uh, administrative documents that came in. So for example, if uh, eight invoices came in today, I could just uh, click the AP invoices as the addressee and put a stamp on an invoice and go to the next one and do the same thing. And those will all be sent to the person that the firm designates to receive inbound invoices. So AirMail2 software application, very easy to use. When you're done, in your doc folder, this folding out basket, you have a stack of paper documents with stamps, with barcodes on it. And now you just take them over to the nearby digital copier. So 
we got to deploy fast and we got to make this simple to operate. Whether you have a Rico, Canon, Xerox, HP, old one, new one, they all have a, a little display panel and we just program an Airmail 2 button on it. So the operator can walk up with an entire stack of documents, put it in the hopper, press the Airmail 2 button and press scan. If I'm in a mail room and we have a big dedicated Fujitsu or Canon scanning, we can use that the same way. We just program one button, put the whole stack in and scan. So when you're walking up to these machines, you don't have to log in. We'll use any make or model of scanning device and you don't need to add any hardware or software to them. One button, stack scanners. Now that your uh, scan device has done its scanning, our server out there on your network or in a hosted environment um, in the cloud is going to grab the scan job. It's going to go through these digital images and it's going to use those stamps to separate out the individual documents. If you scan something upside down, we turn it right side up. But everything in there is going to be OCR'd and made into a searchable PDF. Our Veritag auditing system, which is running automatically in the background, is going to check in this paper document and the newly made image, and we just track that all the way through the process. But lastly, and most importantly, we read that stamp, and we know where to put it in the document management system. We write it to the addressed user's folder in the document management system. So all of that just happens automatically after you press one button and scan your stack. Now, once we've written uh, the daily mail and document requests to each user's designated folders in the document management system, we, um, you know, we upload all the index values, the OCR values into the search engines of the DMS. And that document is now available like any other uh, for subsequent uh, profiling. If I say, yeah, this belongs in the Jones matter, I can just drag and drop it over there. Uh, I, when I'm viewing it, it's in my standard PDF viewer, whatever you have installed. And you'll note that after we scan a document, we remove the stamp or the barcode from the image as it's filed into the document management system. Because, you know, attorneys don't want to see that. So we're using the stamps to get the paper scanned and put away where it belongs. So that's the way the process works. Quickly, um, I would just review that it's a very simple user interface in the software. The users are not going to require much training. We batch the work. We're actually managing the physical work here as well. Uh, we'll use machines that are already in place. And our software, which we've been doing for over a decade, writes automatically to the document management system. Our consultants will have worked with your um, IT folks to configure the foldering system the way you want it to be in your document management software. So all that's just done quickly and, and uh, securely. Now, once I'm done with my scanning work for the day, I do want to check in my mailroom to make sure that everything works. Did every paper document that we received that got a stamp, did it get written where it needs to go digitally? Or is the image quality good? Did we capture all the pages? And then let's stage this paper so that we can store it temporarily or permanently in case it needs to be pulled back. And let's control audit and make sure we can report on this activity every day. So the software is actually managing the entire span of work to physically receive, prep, profile, scan, write to the document management system, and then eventually shred that paper. Fundamental to that is our Veritag automatic document tracking system. From the first point that you run our software and put a stamp on a paper document, we know that document is in the house. And we're going to track that that document in paper and then as an image goes all the way through the process. If a document doesn't enter the process in a given, it doesn't exit the process in a given period of time, we will report on that automatically. We'll say this, this document went missing. You need to go find it. And we have built-in 
what we call our Postmark QC software for quality control. So the operator now can take the stack of daily mail that has just been scanned, pull the first paper document off the stack, and with a little barcode wand reader, or perhaps they can type it, in that screen, it's going to show them on their software screen running quality control software, also browser-based, so it's a zero footprint client. It'll show them a quality control session. Now this is a workflow that our consultants uh, work with your firm to say, how much checking do you want to do? But this software, based on the paper, remember the paper is what's triggering this particular control session here. So yeah, that paper document, it's showing me this did go through the process. Here's, you can look at the images in full page and thumbnail display. We can at this point check page count. That's actually the second place we're checking page count. We can check that it was in fact written to the document management system. Each individual paper document can have a disposition applied. And in the end, you can spend less than a minute on each mail item or each document that has been requested and say, yeah, that was a good uh, um, scan. And you can then take that paper document and put it into your shred stack or into your attention box, whatever it is our consultants work with to handle the way you want to manage the paper towards disposition. So we built in quality control. You also can just take the paper in the sequence that it's flowed through this process. It's got barcodes on it that also represent that sequence. And you can just file it into storage boxes. Our barcode numbering is going to help you find that paper if anybody needs to go back and get it. So it's a very simple process to run quality control and to stage the paper that's gone through the process. And that's the last step in the digital mailroom. So as I said, Doc Solid looked at uh, this need and paid a lot of attention uh, to how a law firm would build a digital mailroom. And we focused on these eight key points, productivity, security, reliability, universality, quality controls, simplicity of operation, rapid deployment, and expertise, continual learning here. And all of that went into the digital mailroom operation. And that's a lot to go over in detail, but let's just compare uh, the digital mailroom as Doc Solid has designed it to the quick alternative of using a digital copier with a, a keypad and a scan to email session. Uh, first, we've actually paid attention and, and let our software and methodology create batches for process efficiency. That's going to be very important, again, with multiple workers or even with a single worker because you've got a time clock ticking to get the mail out. And simply the ability to scan stacks instead of standing there and keying a lot of things one document at a time at a copier uh, reveals that. From a security standpoint, two key elements are that our operators don't require login to the document management system. Typically, a mailroom staff doesn't get that kind of privilege. We don't need it as an operator of Airmail 2. Our, our Airmail 2 will talk to the document management system using conventional APIs and secure calls as we've done for the last decade. And we're not relying, for, from a security standpoint, on scanned email with attachments, uh, which, again, most folks in the legal market want to get away from for a variety of reasons. From a reliability standpoint, uh, Airmail 2 comes with a help desk software so that somebody in a supervisory uh, uh, Status can monitor the operation, run reports on the operation, and also assist if you've got operators in various offices and one of them comes up with a problem. An example of universality is, again, we do not care about your maker model of digital copier. We'll allow you to use what you have, and we're going to turn it into a one-button stack scanning machine without adding any hardware or software. For quality controls, the quality control software I just showed you is patented. Though it, what, it, what it does that's unique is it marries the paper with the software process, which really lets you get the whole job done. Simplicity of operation, we've got a single screen that's going to allow an operator to 
take care of the daily mail and document requests, and we make supplies to facilitate that work. And lastly, for rapid deployment, we can do this as an internet hosted service. So the digital mailroom capabilities built into Airmail 2 are significant and uh, unique. As I mentioned, some of our supplies, uh, the postmark stamps are used to get barcodes onto the documents. We also have heavy duty uh, barcode labels. These are all just pre-printed. We're not printing these, they're pre-printed. They're globally unique sequential numbers with highly readable barcodes. But for the operators, they're just simple, put, put a stamp on your next document. We make doc folders for secure transport of barcoded documents to the scanner. And we even make what we call a doc pocket, which is a plastic sleeve, clear, and it lets you slide in small documents. In this case, if you want to scan the envelopes with these piece of mail and then put it in the same stack without causing a jam at the digital copier. So we're making supplies to make this operation run smoothly. So we believe the digital mailroom is a need born in these times and necessary no matter how these times prevail. There's an increased volume of the need to get digital documents to the home workers. You have to pay attention to security if you're gonna put a new system in place. And you have to have a mission critical, reliable operation because Daily Mail has docketable documents in it every single day. You, you have a service level agreement with the rest of the firm. And if you think about it, it's pretty obvious that this need exists today. None of us are quite sure, and our polls show that, when we're gonna get at least half of our people back into our offices. But I think most law firms believe they're gonna to have to persist in work from home uh, environments as well. But imagine when you get half of your law firm back, do you think you wanna go back to delivering the mail physically? Hiring staff who grab the mail, dump it out, sort it, put it in wire baskets on wheels, and then get on the elevators and run it up to the fourth and fifth floors and walk around to each of the legal assistants or the attorney's desk. I mean, in, in the new normal, if you want to build the uh, herd immunity of your law firm, that's probably a good way to do it. Probably not a good way in the law firm of the future to manage your mail. This is an essential operation now. It's also a new normal operation, the digital mail room. So I, I tried to allow uh, 15 minutes at the end of this today, and I think we're gonna have that if there are questions. I would just remind you that DocSolid's business is paper to digital transformation for law firms. Airmail 2 is our latest offering in our platform. If you go to our website, which is simply docsolid.com. On the first page, you'll see an Airmail 2 button. And from there, you can see, among other things, the ability to sign up for monthly webinars. So if you have other people at your law firm who are interested in this, you can direct them to the monthly webinars that we'll be conducting. If you want to talk to us now, um, you can use the chat panel on your uh, web meeting today, but you also could send an email to hello at docsolid.com and we'll get right back in touch with you. Again, at our website, docsolid.com, there's an Airmail 2 button on the homepage and that'll take you to a, a resource center to let you learn more about Airmail 2. And finally, DocSolid will be at the ALA virtual conference. I have my own virtual airline ticket, uh, June 25th, next week. So please visit our virtual booth. And with that, uh, Carolyn and Michael, yeah. I'll Thank turn you, it back Steve. over and see if we have any questions. Yeah, wonderful, Steve. And Michael, um, you're unmuted if you'd like to go ahead and ask some of the questions. Uh, yes, Steve, we have uh, actually a few. And uh, the first one that came in was just about performance. Uh, the uh, attendee was uh, curious our uh, opinion because they today when they OCR with their existing scanner 
uh, find that it takes a very long time. And uh, can you speak at all then to the performance of Airmail 2 with OCR happening? Right. Your server's got to put on sweatbands when it comes time to do OCR, right? But remember, that's all the um, four of the top 10 largest law firms in the U.S. use this, and they're, they're scanning at offices in different continents as well as across the U.S. So, you know, we, we figure that out. In, in our hosted environment or if we install on-premise, we have heavy-duty image processing engines. And the trick is to just make that happen in the background. Uh, so that users don't even know what's going on. But if you're actually coupling OCR with your machines, that's just the slowest way to do it. You need to let those machines scan and get rid of those digital images and do the OCRing back at um, modern high-speed OCR engines in your server farm. That's the way we do it. Okay, next question is, uh, is this purchase software that we run on our on-premise ourselves? Um, Airmail 2 is a internet hosted solution. So you uh, license it on a subscription. Um, in, in some instances, if you wanted to install it locally, you, you could, I mean, that's our conventional way of doing things, but Airmail 2, can run entirely from the cloud. And again, we're gonna leverage, as I said, your existing scanning devices. The only thing that needs to be deployed at your company is this small service that watches all of your digital copiers and grabs the scan jobs and encrypts them and sends them to the cloud. So any place where images move in our system, they're encrypted. So that little service, which could just run on a server uh, whether you have the local servers or not, is the only thing that gets installed uniquely in your infrastructure. Steve, next question is, would DocSolid have access to our docs? No, we have a uh, uh, support agreement with you that either authorizes or does not authorize us to see your images. So in order to support you, you may want to allow us to do that, but this is something we've been doing for 10 years, uh, getting remote access to our big law firm customers, and they have to give us permission if we're doing support before we can see documents. So um, we, we would satisfy your standards for whether or not DocSolid can provide support with or without your permission to see the documents. Usually it's not necessary. Um, these are pretty um, electronically mechanical processes and actually seeing the documents themselves is generally not supportive. Uh, it's not part of a support situation. Next question is, are stamps actual paper or sticky stamps or ink that we are those stamping stamps, the document? Yeah, you should think of those stamps as just like U.S. postage stamps. They're the same size. They come on a pre-printed roll, they go in a little snap-on dispenser, and they have adhesive on the back. The adhesive is meant so that, you know, it can go through scanners, but you can also take the stamp off later if you want to take it off the physical document. So think of them as just U.S. postage stamps, that same size, and what they have on them are barcodes. And in the barcodes is a sequence of numbers that our software knows automatically simply because they're globally unique and they're sequential. So if you're an Airmail 2 operator and the next stamp number in your role is number 1 billion, well, the one right after that is 1 billion and 1. We know you have a logged in user and we just keep track of your numbers automatically. Next question, how long does it take to launch or stand up this product? Well, here, here's the truth on that. <laughs> As you can imagine, DocSolid has reacted very quickly to the pandemic and the push to work from home. Uh, 90 days ago, this was an idea. Uh, about, I don't know, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, we installed our first customer. There are three now that are installed. Um, in a hosted environment, uh, you could probably be up and running within days of us getting an order. So 
you know, figure five days from a date of order uh, to be stood up and running. And, but what it also takes is for our consultants to engage you and to design the, uh, the digital mailroom for the way your firm chooses to operate. And there's some configuration and operational flexibility options and our consultants will work with you to make that happen. So five days, and five working days would be a, a good um, benchmark to get up and running. The, the follow-on question to that, Steve, is how long does it take to train the staff? Well, the operation of this system is, is pretty simple. What we have found, and frankly, Doc Solomon is learning as everybody else is, it's a lot harder to train staff these days because it's a lot harder to pin staff down and everybody's working from home. Um, to train somebody to operate an Airmail 2 system, if they were already a, let's say, a copy center or a records worker, is probably a two or three hour process. And then you would prob probably want to do some dry runs. So break up the time, maybe spread it over two days, but you've got maybe a half day's worth of training and dry runs before your people are comfortable in doing it. The next question is, how much does AirMail 2 cost? Okay, so for the hosted AirMail 2 system, uh, it's a subscription. So you pay a monthly uh, subscription and to operate the software. And it's an all-inclusive vacation, right? So the monthly subscription includes support. Uh, it, it includes ongoing consulting. A small law firm would pay, and it depends on how you configure it, but as a benchmark, about a thousand dollars a month for everything, and that's an unlimited license. So it really wouldn't matter if you had two or three or four offices, and how many people were working in each office. The digital mailroom for a small law firm is about a thousand dollars a month. Medium-sized law firm, say fifty to one hundred and ninety-nine attorneys, two thousand dollars a month, and a large law firm, Amlaw two hundred, three thousand or more a month. And then on top of that, you would have upset, uh, upfront deployment and consulting fees, uh, which would you know range from let's say six thousand to a big law firm may pay as much as twenty thousand to get it stood up and running. But to operate a thousand, two thousand, or three thousand dollars a month uh, for an unlimited license across any number of offices, and that includes ongoing support. Next question was, can we select more than one person to receive mail within the software? Yes. Um, what, what we do as part of the consulting engagement is work with your IT department to uh, establish a map with your Active Directory, your Microsoft Active Directory. So if you had a list, for example, um, that was working on a matter or you know, two people that process incoming invoices. Uh, we'd be able to um, put that into a folder that is shared for those people in your document management system. What we try to do is align with the way you're using the document management system, but there's different ways to put it together. And our consultants um, work with your IT group to make that happen. The next question, Steve. Uh, as of right now, who have you launched the product with? Can you provide references? Well, yeah, I can provide references. Uh, it's early, but we've got references already, and uh, if somebody's interested, we will certainly share them. Uh, someone followed on to your previous answer. What, so, how do we define the size, small, medium, and large? Right. Uh, Doc Solid would typically call and obviously different people stratify the market differently, but we'd, we'd call a small law firm somewhere between 50 all the way down to, uh, you know, 10 to 20 attorneys. Um, what generally characterizes a small law firm for, for us is they still have invested in document management software, right? And then a medium-sized law firm would be 50, to 200, 
and a large would be 200 or bigger. And uh, typically in our firm, attorneys and their assistants are sent incoming mail scans. Is a separate directory needed to be made for this? Uh, no, we're not scanning to folders on the network. Uh, again, that's another thing that law firms try not to do anymore. We don't want to have these dark holes where things get pushed. So we're actually putting scanned images into a, a daily mail folder for each user in the document management system. And if you turn on document requests, each user would have a document request folder in the document management system. That's where they would get their documents delivered to them digitally. There's a lot of ways to do that with different document management systems. And again, that's something our consultants work with your firm on. Oh, here's a really great question. During QC, if a document needs to be rescanned, will a new stamp be needed or can we use the same stamp originally placed? Right. The uh, same stamp is used. Uh, QC is also made quite simple. Imagine I'm the QC operator and I've got that paper document right here. It's four pages, but I'm looking at the paper document digitally and there's only three pages. What happened is the Xerox machine skipped a page. I literally can just take that stack of paper, turn it around to a small scanner, maybe a little desktop scanner right behind me, drop it in and scan it. Our software will recognize that same stamp as having been scanned before and it'll push it right back through the QC process. Now with four pages and I can approve that QC process for that document. So this, the stamp is reusable, and it actually helps us to reuse it. Okay, and the next question is, uh, can you tell us who among the top firms currently use your product? Not on a webinar with, you know, 50 <laughs> or 60 firms, but uh, we're happy to. Um, four out of the top 10 firms, so you know who they are, four of the top 10 are DocSolid customers. All of our customers have various software or customized solutions from us. You can see across the bottom that, you know, we actually have patented ways to manage printing, scanning, and shredding in a law firm. So we can put together systems different ways. Airmail 2 is actually a software module that just plugs into this software backbone we've had forever. So Airmail 2 is actually a, just a small application that plugs into our existing um, software. Next and, question, and we are currently- It makes it a smaller, more discreet operation, right? I mean, you can imagine if somebody just wants to run a digital mailroom with us, they don't need the rest of this stuff, so. The, the uh, we've had, Many questions today, so I want to thank everyone for participating on the question panel, and uh, that's only, the only reason why I'm moving quickly. I'm sorry if I'm rushing you, Steve, but the next question was uh, from an existing customer of ours. Thank you so much, Sherry. We are currently using QuickTag, and we love it. Uh, I'll just clarify that the QuickTag legal brand was the predecessor brand name uh, that uh, is now known as Postmark. And so she says, what would you say is the most basic difference between our QuickTag Legal and Airmail 2? Hi, Sherry. Thank you for that. Um, Airmail 2 is smaller than QuickTag Legal. And Airmail 2, you don't log in to the document management system. And Airmail 2 gives you that envelope user interface in a browser and it's built specifically for the kind of paper that's going to be flowing through a mailroom. And so it's a, it's a narrow application compared to QuickTag Legal, which is a bit of a Swiss army knife for different types of scanning you might want to do around a, a law firm. Airmail 2 is a narrow, specific application delivered in a browser where users simply address mail or 
documents that have been requested to be delivered to those people, those addressees in the document management system. So it's simplified and focused against that task. And Sherry, the mailman image engines, all that stuff in the plumbing, that's the same, right? It's just that little narrow app that sits down on top of our software platform to get that job done. Great. Next question, Steve. How do we develop the foldering strategy for the scan mail to be received into the DMS? Okay. Um, the primary document management systems that we support are iManage and NetDocuments. We're intimately familiar with both of them and have been writing images to them for a decade, um, or actually longer, in iManage's case. They each have several ways to create a daily mail folder and a um, document delivery folder for individual users of the DMS. So there are a couple choices, and we don't actually impose that. Usually those choices are pre-made because of the way a law firm has already deployed their net documents or iManage system. So our consultants, who are intimately familiar with this, will speak with your, um, well, both your business leaders and your IT leaders. And we'll actually just devise a foldering structure to receive these scans that fits with the methodologies you already have in place. And, and an example of that is that um, some law firms don't allow personal workspaces in the document management system. But if they do, we can just use a daily mail folder in a personal workspace. But if they don't, usually there's a specific matter that has been allocated for that purpose for each individual user. And we'll use that. Uh, the next question, Steve, is the $1,000 per month for airmail to hosted as a standalone or are the other applications included? I think they're maybe referring to the other Postmark platform applications. Well, maybe they're referring to QC. So what I showed you today is Airmail 2 and QC, which you can see is those last two boxes on screen there. Those two are included. And so everything I, I showed you today is included. And, and again, those prices I gave you were just so you could have some benchmarks. There's some configuration and other elements that might cause that price to vary a little bit. But uh, Airmail 2 comes coupled with our Postmark QC software, and that's what's included. Now, if somebody knows about our software platform, there's all sorts of back-end server stuff. And we would deploy that in the cloud for the customer. Everything necessary to make this operate at those prices. There, there aren't additional costs for doing additional things. That includes us hosting a unique instance of your engines in the cloud, all of that included in that price per month. Okay, we're coming up on the top of the hour, and those are all of the questions I think we have time for today. If there are further questions, of course, just get connected with us one-on-one, -on -one, as you see your options on the screen there. And uh, we certainly look forward to seeing everyone at our virtual booth at the ALA virtual conference on June 25th. Uh, I'll pass it back now, I guess, to Carolyn, and uh, you can wrap us up. Yeah, thank you, everyone. A wonderful presentation. And um, for the questions that were not answered, we'll save those chat, and, um, uh, you know, DocSolid will have access to those as well. Um, we will have a recording of today's webcast. We will send an email tomorrow to everyone who registered with that proper link, um, so you can access it that way. And as always, um, please visit our website to sign up for future webcasts. Thank you so much, Steve and Michael, and have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.